So I thought I'd do a very short piece just to give you a sense of my day-to-day -day activity. Um, it tends to involve getting up about 8 o'clock, um, maybe a bit earlier depending on where I have to go. Um, hopefully having figured out my schedule the day before to ensure that that's all kind of clear. <laughs> And it isn't because the schedule keeps changing. Uh, as you know, the weather's been really bad here for a few days, so many events have been delayed. But anyway, get up, have some breakfast, then get on the bus out of the media village and hopefully get to the right destination rather than take the wrong bus, which can happen. Um, and often come down to here, uh, get a sense of what's happening, um, but otherwise go across to a venue and, and sit down and do some work there. One of the things that's quite handy about this accreditation with the press is that you can sit and work at a table whilst watching the sports and and hopefully get a bit of work done and uh, a lot of my time is spent trying to just keep an eye on what's happening around the game is by looking at the media coverage of it building a picture of the stories that are being created around the games and hopefully getting an understanding about what's what's going on uh, uh, this is the sort of event where, in fact, uh, often researchers talk about this as, as a media event, where essentially to get a sense of the whole thing, you really have to just watch the media. Uh, a friend of mine I spoke to this morning, a journalist for the Olympic Broadcast Service, the company that, that shoots all the footage for the games and packages lots of content for broadcasters, uh, told me that he's not getting out to any venues at all. He spends most of his time packaging stuff within a studio where all the feeds, all the content comes in and he just puts it all together and pushes it out. Um, so many of the experiences of people here are like that. They kind of happen uh, in studios, behind closed doors, but getting out into the world and seeing what's actually taking place on the streets, in the venues, is a big part of the research that I do. So I spend half of my day sitting at a computer, but a half of the day also out and about whilst working on the move. One of the things that's really handy is that all the Olympic buses have Wi-Fi in them, so I can sit down if it's an hour to get to the mountains, you can kind of do a bit of work, uh, figure out what's coming up, get a sense of what stories are breaking, and, and build that picture of what's taking place across the entire Olympic Games. One of the luxuries that I have that many others don't have here that are working within the media is not having a deadline to kind of work to. The research that I do allows me to kind of explore and expand the areas of interest, um, which hopefully gives this kind of overarching perspective on what took place without a kind of bottom line that I have to meet. All of that comes a bit later, of course, within the actual publication of research, but, um, but day to day at the games it's pretty much from one venue to the next hopefully seeing everything by the end of it uh, but you know it's always very difficult because it's a huge beast to really tame and really make sense of uh, and actually being able to monitor the media as it's happening is really fascinating so I read yesterday that with all these North Korean cheerleaders that are in the venues uh, there's some of them that sometimes they put on them on their faces a mask which you might have seen on the on the coverage and a lot of people are wondering, who is this mask? They're all female, the cheerleaders, and this mask is a male person. And people wondered, is it a, uh, a picture of the North Korean leader? And it turns out that it's not. The, the mask is used when the song that they're singing is from the voice of a man. So they wear the mask in order to occupy that role. These sorts of things you only find by, by really identifying those kind of interesting sources of, of coverage which are telling stories about the games that, that others aren't and uh, yeah that's that's what keeps me uh, motivated to see these fascinating rich intricate stories about this weird and wonderful world that's the Olympic Games.